On stage is Strength Luminary. We are here to pay tribute to an incredible man, Dr. Terry Todd. And these people all knew him very, very well and were integral in what has become the Arnold Strongman Contest. Starting on your left, that gentleman is a legend, David P. Webster, O-B-E. Next to him, Steve Slater created so many of the apparatus that the strong men have to manipulate. Magnus Vermeer, one of the strongest men in the world. Another legend. Oh. One of the people that makes the clock tick, Kim Beckwith. A judge that has been with us since the very first contest, John Fair. Another man who makes things happen, Bill Dewerson. The Kaz, Bill Kazmaier. Another gentleman who is part of our family, Terry Young. And our past champions, including the very first one, Mark Henry. The man who won seven Arnold Strongman Championships, Zajunas Avikas. What, eight? Eight! A man who overcame all the odds you can possibly imagine to win the championship, Derek Poundstone. Another champion, Batutas Lalas. And these last two people are competing this weekend. Please welcome Brian Shaw. You know him as the mountain. Just look at him. Here he is, Half Thor Bjornsson. Now you need to understand the legacy, the man, the incredible man who is Dr. Terry Todd. He was a pioneer in powerlifting. He coached some of the strongest men in history, like Bill Kazmaier, Lamar Gant, Mark Henry. He did all kinds of media, including working for CBS, writing for Sports Illustrated. He was a college professor who specialized in the history of strength. When Jim Lorimer, Arnold's partner that organizes the whole sports festival, proposed that Dr. Terry start a strongman contest to be part of the Arnold Sports Festival, he used his knowledge of lifting history to come up again and again with unique old school events. And I'm talking about events that nobody else does. Implements to challenge the modern competitors. What is true strength? That was always his goal. When he agreed to begin the contest, started planning in 2001, the first person he talked to about the show, other than his wife, of course, was David Webster. David flew all the way from Scotland to be here today, just as he did in 2002 when he was the head official at the very first Arnold Strongman. Now, along with David and the advice of Bill Kazmaier and Steve Slater, of course, they all put all of this together and made it as unique as it possibly is. Now, Steve Slater has been more than just Terry's crew chief. He's contributed ideas, he's built equipment, like the Austrian oak that you're about to see. And now he and Jan are directing this year's show. John Fair and Kim Beckwith go back to the beginning, as does Ode Haugen. And Magnus for Magnuson, Bill Durson, Carl Gillingham, Terry Young from Canada, and of course the incredible men who come together this year to help spot and load and set the stage. And you can see all of them over there in the blue shirts, the incredible crew that make this happen. Today we honor the man who changed the sport of strongman by creating this show. Jim and Barb Lorimer have brought back all the past winners of the Arnold Strongman Classic, except one. Of course, that's Mike Jenkins who has passed away, but his spirit is with us today, I'm sure. All right, we do have a video. The video plays tribute. It'll show you more of who Dr. Terry Todd was, who he is in all of our hearts. And one more time, I would like you to give a big round of applause, not only to Dr. Terry, but to all of these people who are here to honor him. And now, if you would, please, we're gonna release our athletes so they can continue to warm up for the next event, but everybody else, if you would, please, direct your attention 
to the two screens on the side of the stage and enjoy this wonderful tribute video to Dr. Terry Todd, the legend. He has always had the visions. We each have our sort of separate set of strengths. And Terry has always been able to see three miles down the road as to what might come. Where I'm just sort of saying like, can we just get through today? No, 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 we're always looking ahead. And it's actually not what I ever thought I would be doing with my life. But I'm really proud of what we've done. And I'm really proud of him. My name is Terry Todd. I live in Austin, Texas, home of the University of Texas, which is the location of the Stark Center for Physical Culture and Sports. I was always active in sports. As a boy, I played baseball and had already taken up tennis. If you were a curious youngster who liked books and uh, sports, University of Texas, even back then, was a fine place to have near you. Terry, of course, was this kind of physically and intellectually larger-than-life person. His ability to imagine futures, to dream big, to try to say, you know, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. And I think people see that with what we've tried to do here. Terry Todd. Terry has the sorting things out here. It tests overall body strength. The heaviest and hardest ever. Terry's got it out for those guys. <laughs> with his intelligence, with his star center, this was somebody who could really make things happen. And by heck, he has done. The reason that this collection is uh, here and the reason that Jan and I put it together is that when I was a young man in uh, high school, you were discouraged from any weight training at all. No one in those days trained with weights. The word muscle bound was widely used then. Everyone said, you won't be able to scratch the back of your neck, you won't be able to comb your hair, brush your teeth. And it was a puzzlement to me, really. But I started lifting weights just as I graduated from high school and I uh, had a scholarship here at the University of Texas in tennis. I looked a bit out of place on the tennis courts. My coach was so unhappy uh, looking out onto his beautiful tennis courts here and seeing a bunch of nice, slender, active young men among whom some beast had gotten loose. I caused him a lot of grief. Uh, I remember once I came lumbering in and he said, I know who you are. You're that weightlifting guy. You don't need to say any more. In fact, I'm not going to give you any advice except to stop weightlifting. The worst thing any athlete in any sport could do. You know, I can just look at you and see. You don't look like a tennis player, for God's sakes. You don't, you're bigger than the football players. So I, I <laughs> meekly crept out backwards out of the door, hoping I'd get out alive. So the springtime of my junior year, I stepped away and, and kept my body in the, the weight room from then on. This made me a believer. As I got into it, I thought, why in the world would people believe this nonsense? It's easy to see if you do it, that it does not make you muscle bound. I could jump higher when I weighed 340 than I could when I weighed 195, which is what I weighed when I started. So therefore, I began to study it. My avocation, lifting, became my academic focus. When I met Terry, I was an undergraduate student at Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. I had never done sports. 
He was the guy who kept coming up with all the cool ideas about how to reform the curriculum. And he was at that time 260 pounds and six feet two, big sort of reddish beard. And he often would bring cabers down to the middle of campus and get some of the guys mainly to sort of engage in caber tossing. That was kind of how I first knew him. Lifting was really my first sport. I mean, what an amazing supporter he was. He has always had my back in everything. It was that background that we shared, both as athletes and later as scholars, that led us to create this facility so that people would have a place to come. It's interesting to see how it's developed, how it's consistent with the culture, and there's no evidence that it's going to stop. We feel if you want to call a man the strongest man in the world, you need to have events that represent strength. I continued always to be interested in strength, the great strong men that came over a hundred years before my time and uh, stories about them filled me with uh, excitement and I began collecting and I just couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to get it and I wanted to get more. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, let's give a round of applause for all these unbelievable legends on stage to honor the great Terry Todd. Now, normally, to remember somebody, we'd have a moment of silence. But Dr. Todd loved Strongman. And in Strongman, it's not about being silent. It's about power and it is about energy. So in his honor, I invite you all to join me in a moment of power, and I want to hear everybody at the top of their lungs one time give it up for Dr. Terry Todd. Three, two, one. And with that, let this competition roll on as we ask these gentlemen, give them one more round of applause. Now, you're not going anywhere, because up here is my co-host. You already met him. Legendary figure. Two times he represented the U.S. as an Olympic weightlifter. WWE Hall of Fame, as they said, the inaugural winner of the Arnold Trojan World Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Mark Henry! An incredible tribute to an incredible man. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Dr. Bill Crawford and Bill to people in the strongman community, I know to you especially. Dr. Terry Todd was basically family. Yes, Terry was like family to me and uh, it's uh, a little difficult to speak right now, but Terry was a visionary as you heard, but mostly Terry was a great friend, but mostly he gave people in strength sports a voice. He was our he was our, our bard. He told the stories. He knew all the people. He gave us a chance to show ourselves. I know that men that would go to competitions and know that Terry was there would lift more weight just because he knew they knew that the world would see that they would be lifting those weights because he would report out those those results. And this voice is going to continue through us as we continue this tradition with strong men and these traditional events and with Terry's vision. And all of us will always owe something to this pioneer in sport. He actually was one of the creators of the sport of strongman in the modern times, and no one can ever refute that. And he was one of the co-creators of the Arnold Strongman Classic, and the 2019 competition continues here. We are through three of five events, getting set for the fourth event of the competition. The event that just took place, so let's recap that. That was the Wheel of Pain, and the youngster 
from Ukraine, Alexei Novikov, set a blistering pace and had the distance to beat for most of the event. He went a distance of 113 feet even, and that one stood until Martins Lisi's the dragon, got onto the implement. A very steady pace for Lisi's, and he was able to edge out Novikov's mark. Martins Lisi's pushing the wheel of pain a distance of 119 feet nine inches. Half Thor Bjornsson, the overall leader after two events, was the last man onto the wheel of pain and he was trying to track down Lisi's top distance and it was close. Bjornsson just could not make it. Six inches short and that gives Martins Lisi's his first event win of the competition. The overall standings now after three of five events, Hafthor Bjornsson with 29 out of a possible 30 total points. Martins Lisi's courtesy of that last victory moves into second all by himself and now trails Bjornsson by six. Alexei Novikov is in third place by one point, but right now Alexei Novikov is getting checked by the medical team for an injury. He is not currently lined up to take a turn on the Austrian Oak. If he is cleared, he will be back in the competition. But Novikov getting checked by the medical team, and we will have more on that as it becomes available to us. The fourth of five events, the Austrian Oak, the athletes with 90 seconds for max reps, 430 pounds. Now, obviously, you got to be strong. We all know that. But there is a lot of technique involved with this implement. Yes, the first thing that you need to do is have an efficient lift to the chest. You'll see the athletes squat down and turn their hands forward typically and roll the log back up to the top of the chest. The second key is after the, the implement is on your chest because it's forward, it's not a barbell because a barbell's on your shoulders, this is forward on your shoulders. You want to point your elbows back, you want to push back and up, back and up because if you'll, if you'll notice, the athletes have their hands well forward of their face. So the athletes that will be able to get this log overhead will be the ones that can push Otherwise back and up the most bad. efficiently. Here is the order in which we will proceed. Jerry Pritchett will be the first man on the Austrian Oak, followed by Mateusz Kaloskowski, who has been waiting for these final two events. They are really in his wheelhouse. Brian Shaw will go third, and then we will work our way down to the overall leader, Half Thor. Bjornsson is now just eight men out of the 10 that started this competition remain. But remember, Alexei Novikov, if he is cleared by the medical staff, will be back in the competition. And Jerry Pritchett will be the first man to lift this 430 pound Austrian Oak. Back to back in ninth place finishes have basically knocked him out of competition for the overall win. And he's looking now to score some points just to get himself back up into the middle of this overall leaderboard. This is a beautiful implement, very well balanced. It's heavy, but it's very well made. As you can see, it's even artistically made. And Pritchett is a guy who's been interested in strength training since he was 15 years old. Currently resides in Phoenix, Arizona, where he works as a metal fabricator for a public utilities transportation department and actually builds a lot of the equipment with which he trains for competition and has been in the Arnold Strongman Classic every year since 2013. His best career finish was in 2017 when he finished in third place overall, and now he approaches the Austrian Oak, 90 seconds for max repetitions at 430 pounds. Notice how he has his hands turned over. Squats down, drives up with his hips, and rolls it back. Now he's got his elbows in a forward position. Pritchett will reset. It's a long time to have 430 pounds up to your chest. Back for a second attempt. And Pritchett looks like he is done, and he will step away without recording a single repetition on the Austrian Oak, yes, and uh, they'll have the secondary competition. He's got his elbows forward, and it really he's really trying to just push it back. See, his elbows are forward. That puts his hands in the position closer to his shoulders. If you actually hold your hands 
perpendicular to the floor, what will happen is you'll just drive up, but that up is directly in front of your face and out, and it'll, it'll fall forward. Mateusz Kaloskowski from Poland is next, and we saw this man attack a similar implement. It was lighter. It was in Santa Monica, but just basically ripped that thing off the ground and put it over his head in no time. He has been waiting for this event. Yes, 385 of the uh, Santa Monica implement. This is much heavier at, at uh, 430 pounds, and he used sort of a snatch technique that all dazzled us. There was very little pause at the shoulders there on the pier in Santa Monica, but again, this implement much heavier. The Austrian Oak, 430 pounds. And here goes Kaliskowski on his first attempt. Oh my God. And you saw cleanly got that to the shoulder. And one rep. Excellent. For Mateusz Kaliskowski. It's not if he's going to do it, but how many times? We need you right here. Here's attempt number two now. Mateusz Kaliskowski out of Poland. He's really muscling it up. Elbows are forward, up and back. And that'll be two. Mateusz Kaliskowski picking up right where he left off in Santa Monica, not having a whole lot of trouble with the Austrian Oak. Two reps and counting. Incomparable Sedrunas Saviskas, eight-time champion here, finished with four repetitions with this implement one year. Third attempt for Kaliskowski. Oh, and the crowd was trying to will that thing over his head, but Kaliskowski will exit with two good reps, and he is the early leader. Those are two big repetitions because this next he is showing so much courage. Two years ago, okay, elbows are forward, hip drive, Last and then up and back. Locks his arms against the down signal. Year, since the deadlift, you can elbows see are forward, up and back. Him. But if anybody can get this log, excellent up, technique. Brian Shaw way. will step up to the Austrian Oak next. Best finish of the competition was the Elephant Bar Deadlift where he finished second. Has been dealing with a bit of a hamstring issue that he aggravated in that lift and has gone back to back eighth place finishes since that opening event. Brian excels at static events. So there are three basic uh, categories of, of strongman events, grip events, static events where you stand in place like a deadlift or an overhead press, and then strength endurance typically like uh, you know, moving to load something like stones or carry something or push something. You can see that bandage wrapping his left hamstring. He was having that thing worked on quite a bit after day one of competition. It was after the Husafel stone carry. He was back behind the stage here, receiving quite a bit of treatment on that leg and has it wrapped and he's going to go. It's probably a, a high hamstring insertion uh, area that's uh, bothering him. Asking for the oak to be adjusted just slightly. Attention to detail is legendary. Always He's very good focused. with overhead events. He is chalked up. Brian Shaw has been at this competition every year since 2010, and he has won it three times. This is going to challenge his mental strength. He's got an injury, and he's still pushing on. First attempt for Brian Shaw. Mateusz Kaloskowski is your early leader with two complete repetitions. And one down, yes, for Brian Shaw. In a lift like this, how much of a factor is your hamstring? Well, you have to be able to stabilize yourself and, and to uh, push your hips forward and lock yourself yeah, under a weight. The hamstring glute mechanism is very important. You can't flex your hips forward uh, if you've got a high hamstring issue, typically. Inside a minute now for Brian Shaw. Second attempt. The 
Crowd trying to help out Brian Shaw, and he will not be able to lock that one out. Uh, and wow, you can tell the close. leg is bothering him a little bit there. He go? Has time for one more attempt. Brian Shaw is going to go again. This is insane. 15 seconds. Come on. going to have to hurry. The heart of the champion. Brian Shaw, eight seconds to kill this one. Will not happen for Brian Shaw as he just, you can tell how much he's hurting. And you said it earlier at the beginning of the day, there was some doubt as to whether or not he was going to be in the competition. And you quickly said, no, no, Brian Shaw is going to compete. Yes, he will compete, even in pain and, and uh, with those restrictions. Now, here's his good attempt that he got over his head. Push with his hips, elbows up and back. Had a difficulty, notice how he staggered. That's because he had difficulty actually flexing his hips forward, locking out. Left Brian Shaw here. saying Ladies thank you to the crowd and everybody, everyone here was behind him, including Shaw. me. And they know that this man is not 100% and he is still gutting through this competition. That will give way to the man on the bottom left of your screen, Matyaz Velshak, making his second career appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He was sixth overall. But in 2018. Really the charts in this competition. And the deeper we get into these events. Now look, he's turning his attention to another competitor to say, you know, come on, let's go, let's get it done. To the fact that he's one of the better condition athletes we have, not just the strongest. Bellshock has gotten better with every event. Started Two out with that seventh in the opening the event and then fourth in the Wheel of Pain that kicked off the second and final day of competition here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. The second to last event, five total events in the most prestigious strongman competition in the world. A lot of money on the line here too. The winner taking home $72,000. So these these athletes, when they get older, get better at static events. So as a young athlete like uh, Matyaz, very important to continue to develop that static strength with deadlifts and overhead pressing, squatting strength. So far, Kalishkovsky with two reps to mark the beat. But he had a definite improvement in his deadlift, so his static events are, are improving year to year. Hellshock will be the fourth man All right, to take on the Austrian Oak, the fourth of eight strongmen here in event number four. First attempt for Bellshock. Right up! Bellshock, the power! Belshock has to stabilize it. He will not get credit for that ref. The athletes do have to wait for a signal from the judge. Yes. Now going back to the chalk. So he pushed back, but probably pushed back a little bit too much, and it goes behind him. He did that at Santa Monica also. Here's attempt number two for Belshock. Once again, a little trouble getting it to his shoulders, but now just cannot complete the press. He rolled his eyes up. That was a golden opportunity to lock that out, which he had, but he couldn't get his feet placed. You have to have your body under control, under the implement to get the down signal from the judge. And nobody's better at understanding this than Magnus for Magnus on the head judge. Magnus for Magnus is right in front of Matjas Belshock. He's at the bottom of your screen right now. His third attempt for Matjas Belshock. Elbows are forward. The press is not going to happen if Belshock calls it. Just didn't have enough diesel to finish it up. Only two men so far have able, been able to get that thing overhead. That's not just Kalish Koski, who's still your leader with two complete repetitions, and Brian Shaw was able to complete one. The first part of this looked good for Belshock. It was the finish that he just couldn't put together. Up and back, but it went a little bit behind him. He couldn't, he couldn't stabilize himself. And he knows he lost a golden opportunity that fishing up to the chest. Just couldn't get it up. I can tell you when you have a heavy log up your up to your shoulders like that, you don't feel the pressure so much in your shoulders. You feel it a little bit in your lower back. Mostly you feel it in your abdominal muscles. Your current standings is we are now halfway through the eight athletes. Hiloskowski from Poland, still your leader with two complete repetitions, and Brian Shaw with one. Mikhail Shivlikov 
is up next. Started off great with a tie for third in the elephant bar deadlift. And a seventh and a fifth in the wheel of pain. So getting a repetition with this implement then puts you ahead of all others who do not and have to go to the lighter implement. Come on, Shilnikov. Shilnikov trying to get himself fired up. The Siberian force ready. getting set to take on the Austrian Oak. Get ready for the man the black red from the Russian Special Forces, Mikhail Shilnikov. He's coming up to check, waiting for the whistle. Shivlikov making sure everything is in the position, that, oh, position in which he would like it. Here we go. Once you hear Mikhail that whistle, 90 seconds. The mark to me. We'll have 90 Kavish seconds to as many repetitions as possible, getting the crowd behind him. Shivlikov. Checks with Magnus Mervagnus in the head judge, and now Mikhail Shivlikov on attempt number one. Whistle's on. All right, he seconds. Pitching to the chest. And the press is good as Magnus Ravagnuson gives him the signal. One down from Kyle Shilvikov, now the third man to be able to lift that over his head. Get a reset. He's got over a minute left. He's going to take his time, reset just a bit. Notice how most of these lifters, these strong men are using uh, lifting shoes with that heel on them. And the reason for that is when you push back with that implement, it allows you to lean back onto your heels and, and maintain that position. Plus, it's a much more solid base to work from. And that may not seem like a lot, but when you're dealing with something this heavy, I mean, just millimeters in positioning can make a difference. Yes, and that's that's exactly it. It's that, uh, those, those tiny little details that make or break attempts at this level. Second attempt for Mikhail Shivlikov. Look at the match, Kevin Skolsky. If he gets this, he would tie for the lead. And that is good for the Siberian force, and he has tied. Mik with and he's tied for first. Mikhail Kieliskowski, pardon me, for the lead. Kieliskowski earlier with two complete repetitions. And Mikhail Shivlikov will complete two as well. Great performance from the Siberian force. Gets it efficiently up, rolling it back. His elbows are forward, pushes back. Got to hold it. Notice his elbows are forward, pushing back over his face. It goes a little bit behind your head, but again, we're talking about the details of being able to lock it out. Something about those shoes as well. Two successful reps on two attempts from Kyle Shivlikov, and that will give way to Ron O'Heinla out of Estonia, who has been pretty impressive so far in this competition. Really impressive. Third in the Husafell Stone. Had him tied for second place after day one, but then he dropped down the leaderboard the after a sixth place business. finish in the Wheel they of Pain, trying to move back up into contention for one of those top so three this spots. Is, this, is, this is film review. This is actually doing a lot of lifting with the Oaks. Yes, from so Estonia. Let's, let's see what he's going to do now. The land of George Hackenschmidt. So strong man is alive and well. well coming to the Oak. In his home country. Estonia. With the, with the tradition. Heinle! He's been powerlifting and weightlifting since he was 10. First attempt, Ron O'Heinla on the Austrian Oak, 430 pounds. That whistle, There's the whistle. Can anyone pass two 195 kilos on him. Heinle quickly to work, but just cannot complete the press. Had a good start with some hip drive. Looked a little sluggish, like the weight was trying to roll forward on him. So that's why you want to drive your elbows forward as hard as possible to lock that log onto your chest. It also puts your elbows in a better position to push up and back. Only three of Five men so far have been able to get the Austrian Oak over their heads. Ron O'Heinla, the sixth man out on this stage. Now ready for his second attempt. seconds left, halfway through his time. Looking to get two reps, can he get his first here?
Once again, gets it to the chest. Closer on the press, but still will not go. And Heinle will leave without a successful lift. Yes, correct. The second attempt, he had a little more speed on it. What that does is it gives you a chance to have expended less energy to save for the upward movement of the, of the implement overhead. A little quicker to the chest. Just, just couldn't get it over his face so they can then drive completely back. Just to make a quick comment about him starting lifting at age 10. In the U.S., we're starting to have young athletes start in strength sports earlier. Martins Lises, who currently sits in second place after his win in the Wheel of Pain. We saw him win that. Arnold Strongman Classic in Santa Monica, and that was when we really figured out that this kid was going to be a contender when he got here. Yes, uh, he, he's someone that always comes comes on stronger through the end of competition. And he gets right to work. First attempt releases. And he will lock it out. And now sits in the tie for second place with Brian Shaw in this event. Right to work on attempt number two. All right. Let's go, guys. Get behind him. And Lises will hit that one and is now tied for the lead with Matthews Keloskowski and Mikhail Shiblikov with two successful reps, and he still has plenty of time. He wants to dig down and get this third rep. This would this would definitely separate him from the competition. Looking to keep the pressure on Hafthor Bjornsson. Martins Lisi's just six points back of Bjornsson in the overall standings coming into this event. One event remains after this. Third attempt for the Dragon. Quickly up to the chest. Lisi's out of gas but does tie for the best mark so far with two successful reps. And he did not waste a whole lot of setup time. He got right to work on this thing and back-to-back -back quick successful reps for Martins Lises. Elbows are forward, backing up. Notice that on the uh, first rep and, and well, actually the second rep, the he's got that right foot back just a little bit. First place. Pushing the first and two events, second up and, one event. and able to and lock it. To do, two successful reps. attempts from Martins Lisi's and now the he overall wins. leader in your defending he Arnold Strongman Classic Champion, Hathor Bjornsson, set a record in the elephant bar deadlift with a lift of 1,045 pounds, then won the Husafell stone carry to go back to back on day one and was only six inches away from beating Martins Lisi's in the wheel of pain. Yes, the Icelandic giant. His father's probably close to seven feet tall and his grandfather is too, and they're both here in the audience watching him. They are an easy family to spot walking through the crowd. One more look at the overall standings coming into this final attempt. The overall standings in this event, three men have completed two repetitions. Martins Lisi's the most recent, and then Brian Shaw completed one. A 430 pound ball. He really needs to hit two reps and get himself in that pack. But then he can completely separate himself from the pack with, with a third repetition. Half Thor Bjornsson just needs to stay close to Martins Lisi's, the man immediately behind him in the overall standings. Bjornsson leads Lisi's by six points coming into this event. And this is his first attempt on the Austrian Oak. 430 pounds, 195 kilos. And that is easy for Hafthor Bjornsson. One successful rep, to, rep is in. Hafthor, one of the few athletes in the field who actually weighs more than the log. So it's given him a little bit more in his legs. He don't have to really bound so much. Just needs one more to tie himself with the three other athletes who have completed two repetitions. Clearing his head a little bit there. Mountain asks for some help from the crowd, and they will gladly give it to him on attempt number two. Help the Mountain out here. 
here, folks. Bjornsson locks that out, and he has tied for the lead. And he has more time left on the clock if he wants to make another attempt. He needs this attempt, and he'll basically lock down the competition overall. Third attempt for the Mountain. Plenty of time. No problem to the chest. No. And Bjornsson just cannot get under it. Two reps, though, will tie him with three other men in this event, thanking the crowd. And Hathor Bjornsson will remain your overall leader heading in to the final event that will be later on tonight, the stone to shoulder, but he mauled that thing up on his first attempt. Yes, super efficient up, very, very quickly up. On the main stage with the stone to shoulder. Oh, was Ladies forward. and gentlemen, you enjoy the Strongman Championship. Up back. I said, are you enjoying the Another thing when you get a really heavy weight overhead like that is fighting that pressure in your and abdominal muscles and forward and making sure that you can lock the weight over your head. And now the lighter log will come out. That's 385 pounds. The athletes who did not complete a single lift on the heavier log will now get to attempt that. So That's just to set this up just a little bit, Sean, uh, in, in uh, Ravensburg Madness uh, about 15 years ago, set the world's record in the log press with 385 pounds. This is the consolation log now and just to try to get as many reps as possible. So that shows you the evolution of straw men and how being event specific and working with these logs has evolved over this time period. Jerry Pridget will be up first. He is one of three men who did not record a successful lift on the Austrian Oak. Not just Belshock and Ronald Heinle were the other two. It really does make a big difference. Now they're fighting for points. These points are placements. Placements is money. These are professional athletes. They know what they're doing. Jerry Pritchett approaching the log. 385 pounds now. And he will go for as many repetitions as he can in 90 seconds. Richard struggling, but he will get credit for it as Magnus Mervagnuson gives him the down signal. A little more ginger. He's not trying to be too explosive coming up with a little bit of an issue with one of his hamstrings. Here's attempt number two. And Pritchett will call it, but he does get one successful lift. Pritchett got well on the feather, and that could still earn him points. Yes, and we Jerry Pritchett with just one event remaining. We kind of close it out too soon. There's a lot left. And everything to go. was good about this lift, and then the only part he really struggled with was getting over his head. Yes, because he, he had a little bit of distance with the log Dennis when he got it up to his chest. Well but again, lock, locking your hips out, events. all those muscles that uh, pertain to the posterior chain, the, the rectal muscles in the back, and the hamstrings, you need that those muscles intact. Not Josh Belshock is up next, and he is another man who has improved as this competition has gone on. He grew up in a family of cooking enthusiasts. His parents own a restaurant in Slovenia, and he actually works there sometimes as an, an apprentice chef. His powerlifting career began at the junior stages. He was 17 years old, and he won the 2017 Arnold Classic Europe Strongman in the 2017 Arnold Classic Poland, and he was a points qualifier in the overall standings to get here to the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic and trying to improve on his sixth place finish from last year. Not making his belt too tight. Just trying to get a little something for the abdominal wall to push on. All right, he's approaching the bar. Opposite of what people Three think of. The five. weightlifting belt really doesn't help your lower back as much as it helps you push your abdominal wall against something. Let's get 90 seconds, as many reps. Not Josh Belshock, 
385 pounds, 90 seconds for as many repetitions as he can get. That is one good repetition for the man from Slovenia, and that one looked like no problem. That's a very routine lift for him. Once again, every man that did one He's now tied with Jerry Pritchett, with who also has just one successful attempt at this weight. Here's lift number two. With the feather. And Belshock will get credit for that one. Very little uh, hip flexion to, to drive that up with his hips. More of a strict press. He was very, very close with that, with the uh, Austrian Oak. But you see the difference with that. That's two successful attempts, and remember this this implement, regardless of how many times you lift it, will not leapfrog you over the men who got at least one successful attempt on the Austrian Oak. This is now a replacement. And the clean, but not as strong in the, in the press. Bell shot going for three. It's not done yet. 27 seconds. Now lining up for attempt number four. Two good lifts for Matyaj Belshak to put him ahead of Jerry Pritchett. One more man remains, and that is Ronald Heinle. Another young also, athlete that needs to work on his static strength. Record breakers after the guys finish lifting the feather. And with the we go. good hip flexion, very explosive up. Elbows forward. In this event. So Rano Heinle now. Back and above gets the down signal. He looked real good getting the big bar up. Very good. Though. Here's Rano he Heinle from Estonia. He yeah, won the 2018 Arnold technique. Classic uh, Australia Championship to qualify here. Six time Estonia's team strongest team man. Team and again, we mentioned started weightlifting at a very young age and started competing in strongman in 2000. Six years ago, he tore his right Achilles tendon, and doctors told him he'd just have to recover from it. His leg actually swelled, and in his words, began to rot. Ten centimeters of his tendon were removed, and six surgeries later, he finally recovered and says it's an injury that he still feels to this day. And now his first attempt at the 385-pound log, and that is no problem for Heine. Yes, he handled a 385-pound log at the Santa Monica Arnold Strongman Classic uh, quite well several repetitions. This will springboard him above Pritchett. And also uh, in front of Belshock, he gets another repetition with this 385 pound walk. Belshock got two, can Heimlich Pritchett with one successful lift on this piece of equipment. Belshock had two, so Heimlich now on his second attempt. And it looks like Heimlich May not have gotten credit for that. He had it above his head, but he did not get the down signal, and that is a lot of wasted effort. Well, we call that a postcard lift. If you took a picture at the right time, it looked like an overhead lift. This is the third attempt for Heinle. He needs to wait for Magnus for Magnus' signal. He's at the bottom of your screen, and there it is. And that lift will count. Still 30 seconds left. Still plenty of time for Ronald Heinle to make another attempt. Magnus is a great judge. If he did, if it wasn't set, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have given the down signal. So, Heinle struggling with it and won't be able to get it over his head. So two good lifts for Ronald Heinle will tie him with Matyaj Belshak. Jerry Bridget will finish with one, as the fourth of five events at the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic are now in the books. And half Thor Bjornsson will take his lead into the final event and try to lock up his second consecutive Arnold Strongman Classic Championship. The final results, four men with two successful lifts. Bjornsson was the final man to log two. Brian Shaw gets one. And then on the lighter log, Matyaj Belshak and Rana Heinle both get two, and it's Jerry Pritchett who will finish in eighth place with one good lift on that 385-pound log. So one more look at some of the men who were able to get 
the Austrian Oak up and over their heads more than once. And we start with Matthews Kieliszkowski. Well, this this uh, the Austrian Oak actually has a larger diameter, and that's one of the reasons it's harder to overcome than the smaller log. Martins Lisi's went quickly with good back-to-back -back repetitions. Was unable to get a third. And now half Thor Bjornsson, who just needed to stay close to Lisi's in order to not surrender too much of his lead. He does just that with two good lifts. And here are your unofficial point standings. After four events, half Thor Bjornsson increases his lead now to nine points over Martins Lisi's. Mikhail Shilikov moves into third. Ronald Heinle is now in fourth. Matthias Kieliszkowski is in fifth. The disappointing competition for Brian Shaw continues as he is in sixth place. And Alexei Novikov, who was in third to start this event, again, he was getting checked out by the medical team for an injury. He may not be out of the competition. He did not participate in this. If he is cleared, he will return. He's been impressive so far. Four events are down. One remains. We will step aside for a moment, but the action is not done. The Rogue Record Breakers continues when we return to the Arnold Strongman Classic in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> 